Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. My name is Matthew and thank you for being here for another episode of Beyond the Lines. It's the show where we get an opposition supporters view when it comes to previewing Newcastle's next game. And this Saturday at three o'clock, Newcastle welcome Brentford to St. James's Park. And to help me preview this one, I'm joined by a very special guest. He's a big Brentford fan. You'll see him travelling all over the country following his beautiful bees. And he'll also be travelling all over the world following England as well well um he's also the first person to be on this podcast for a third time i don't have a hat-trick ball for you mate but you have all my respect it's billy ladies and gentlemen how are you doing i'm very well how are you doing thanks for inviting me back on for the third time i can't believe you've decided to have me on yet again like you know i must have done something (laughs) right like you know so or maybe it was the fact that brentford actually didn't didn't win either the other two games you fought <laughs> actually this is the he's a lucky omen let's get him back on again like oh, you know but like i said to you thanks very much for having us on very delighted to be on your podcast very delighted to be on any premier league podcast this season to be quite <laughs> honest with, with you because it just basically means that we're back in the premier league which is something i couldn't have uh predicted necessarily when i was on your very first podcast um probably about a year or so ago so i'm feeling very happy about that which is all good but um yeah, so um, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting start to the season for the bees, but I'm sure that we'll talk about all that in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like I say, hopefully it's not third times a charm for for you and Brentford. Hopefully it follows. I mean, I mean to be fair, you, the first time you came on it, we drew three three. And like I said, we'll probably talk about that a little bit. But obviously, we got the win two 0 at the end of last season, which certainly shall we say altered our trajectories a little bit. We went started. Just continuing to win games, you guys sort of start looking over your shoulder a little bit, but thankfully for you. And, you know, it's great to have Brentford in the league. You know, you, you sort of stayed up and it, comfortably in the end, would you say? Yeah, I mean, it was comfortable. It's a, it's a bit of a weird season last season um, because it was it was actually three distinct thirds for Brentford. Um, we had our start of the season, which was wicked. The start of the season, which, you know, we couldn't have, you know, asked any better. Being Arsenal, being West Ham, you know, basically being very comfortably, you know, in, you know, doing doing well and, you know, picking up points. And we did very well until the middle of October. And then in the middle of October, and I think I explained this on your podcast last time, we had a really serious injury where David Rea got injured. He, he got injured, I think it was against, I can't, it might have been Leicester, I can't remember exactly who it was, but he got injured in that game. And, you know, me as a, as a football fan who probably sort of kind of probably underestimates how good our goalkeeper is, I said, don't worry, you know, if he's out for a few weeks, we just get somebody else in. As long as they can save the ball, that's fine. I didn't realise, I mean, I knew that he was integral to the way he played, but he was absolutely crucial to the way that we played. So him being out and also Christopher Ayer, who's, uh, who was, I think, was our record signing at the time, him being out as well, those two players being out, but also for a long period of time, completely and utterly just sort of destroyed everything that we've been doing, you know, our ability to play out from the back, the confidence of the defence, all this kind of stuff. So we actually basically had a rocky, I think it was about five months, October, November, December, January and February were sort of kind of a really rocky time for us. We're trying to find a win. We found it quite tricky. And uh, a lot of the time, you know, people are sort of saying, you know, Brentford, you know, they had it, you know, they had their, they had their early lucky run at the beginning, and now look, it's you know, it's obviously, it's obviously, you know, the truth is coming shining through. But the thing is that us, you know, you know, what it's like when you see your team week in and week out, you you know the score, yeah. and it's not rose tinted glasses. You know, you can sit down and look like, you know, we're going to go up to Newcastle, we're going to go up to the fourth, we're going to sit down with Newcastle fans there, and we'll have a drink with them, and we'll talk football, and we'll be realistic about it because that's the way that we are. Sometimes, you know, you talk with people and they're not realistic about it. And you think, yeah, okay, you support a football team, but you don't support it in the same way that I do. And if Brentford play rubbish, I'll sit down there and I'll tell someone straight up, they're not, we're not, we're not very good, or we'd be lucky this week. We, and we sit down with somebody else and say the same thing as well. You know, we've been to many a game where we come out and somebody said to us, God, you know, we got three points today, but you absolutely crucified us. You were much better than us today. And I, I, I like that part of the football, yeah. you know, and I'd sit down and I'll tell you straight up, you know, we were not very good during that period of time. But we were almost like finger in the dam because what we realised is that when our when we had our first team, which is the first eleven players that we had, because you also have to remember that we didn't buy five hundred and seventy-two players this season <laughs> like not in Forest did. You know what I'm saying last season we didn't do that. We pretty much stuck with our championship players, and then we plucked a few players to sort of add in around them. But they were very confident that they would stay up with the championship team that we had. So confident, and I didn't even know this as well. And I'm going to say this as well because our director of football, Phil Giles, is a is a, is a Newcastle fan as well. So I suppose oh, well. there's a bit of a loving for him for, for for you there. So he's not 
it, it, he's not messing around. But I didn't realise they had predicted Brentford to finish 13th last season at the beginning of the season. And we're a, um, we're, we're a stat side. And, yeah, I was uh, just obviously about kept, to say that. Yeah. We're, we're, and, we're, and they kept that very quiet. They didn't sort of reveal that towards sort of the back end of the season when they said, actually, we predicted them to be finished. Now you turn around and say, ah, they just made it up. But I actually do believe that they did because I know the way that they operate. Yeah. So we, um, during that period, it really was finger in the damn time where we brought in this, 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 this goalkeeper. And I'm not even going to mention his name because I think it's not fair on him. Um, but he, you know, because, but he just, he was, and he played against you in the second game that we played. And he was just, um, he was, uh, he, he just, in the first game, or was it the second game? I can't remember. Maybe both games. But anyway, he just wasn't particularly good. And he yeah. gave our defence the shakes. He gave, you know, he, every time the ball came, you know, like when you've got a goalkeeper in goal, like, you know, when you maybe you've got your kids playing football and then they put the goalkeeper in goal. And every time the ball comes near him, you're going, oh, oh is he going to drop it? Oh, it's fine. He caught it. Like, you know, it literally was one of those scenarios with him. And uh, we let in a load of goals with him. Like so many goals, we actually had to sub the sub keeper and bring in another keeper. And signed another keeper in his place in December. So that, that was a that was a dodgy third that we had, which included the period that we played you in. Uh, and then our players started to come back from injury, including David Raya, and that coincided with Christian Eriksen also joining us as well. So it was almost like the perfect storm where we had our good players back. We started to come back to the form like we were at the beginning of the season, plus Christian Eriksen on the top, and then we finished with a flourish. And the, and the highlight of that obviously is beating Chelsea. 4-1. I mean, I have to mention beating Arsenal 2-0 at the beginning. That was probably the highlight. And then beating, beating uh, Chelsea 4-1 at their place on their turf. West London rivals. Uh, that was brilliant. So, yeah, we, we had a we had a, a good season last season. Definitely three-thirds. But I have to say this, and I'll tell you this 100%. I was never worried about us going down. Even when we hadn't won for two months from the 3rd of January all the way to after we played you at the end of uh, February, Every week I was going on our podcast, I said, no problems. Honestly, we're good enough. We'll be fine when our players can go up here all that. And I got a little bit of stick from it from certain people saying, how can you be so confident? But I really was because I just believed that the quality was there and seeing what we did before and when the players come back, we'd be okay. So uh, I'm not, I was not being arrogant about it. You've got to remember we're Brentford fans and yeah, we're just yeah. happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, so it was a good season overall. Well, that was, like you say, you watch your team. And you can only formulate your opinion, formulate your honest opinion. And, I, and I'll be honest, I remember when people were saying Brentford are going to get dragged into it. And you looked at it from a just a purely logical run of form wise. You thought, well, maybe they will. But I get, again, from what I'd watched of Brentford, I thought they were a good side when their players were fit. And like you say, that Christian Eriksen signing was huge. But that was last season. We're back in we're into the, the new season now. Um, and first things first, you know, you, you, you're sitting 10th in the very early stages of the Premier League. Um, and you've got two wins, four draws, two losses. Quite similar to our start of the, the league, just, just one loss difference. Um, you've had resounding wins against Man United and Leeds. You've, you've, you know, you've been beaten off the likes of Fulham and, and Arsenal, who Arsenal are rightly yeah. flying. And then a few score draws. Would you would you say that's a solid start though, Billy? I mean, given way way what you want to do this season, is it is it give a good foundation? Yeah, I mean, listen, <laughs> I got, I, listen. I'm not trying to put ourselves down, but you know, we're just we're happy to be here, mate. We're, we're having a laugh, like you know, we're not expected <laughs> to be where we are. People are probably giving us a little bit more respect this year than they were last year. So, I mean, we're tenth, you know. I mean, you know, you can ask me, should we stop the season now? Let's <laughs> stop the season now, and then we can have the rest of the year off and the next year, like yeah, you know. Yeah. But no, we're we're having we're having a lot of fun, you know. Listen, it could all change in a minute, and we realise that. Um, we realise that, you know, especially from last season, you get a few key injuries and that really cripple you. I mean, we've got even Pinnock, who's been out since the start of the season. Christian Ayer has only just come back at this season. Christian Norgard, who's a massive, massive player in the way that we play, he's 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 injured. He's going to be out for a while. So all of a sudden we've noticed there's a, there is a change in our style and a change what we can do, a bit of a change in our creativity. So all of a sudden it's like, you know, maybe games that we might have won, you know, like Bournemouth last Saturday, it, it ends up being a nil-all draw you know, because we ain't able to break down their two banks of whatever they have put behind the ball, two banks of 27, like, you know. So um, <laughs> it becomes really... So we're not taking anything for granted, but being the position that we're in now, and we realise, and everyone told us that, it, in the Premier League is about making the early start. and We've made the early starts and got ourselves up there. So if you find yourselves in a bit of a pickle in the middle or towards the back end, you could always make those adjustments. The, the last thing that you want to be doing is kind of like, you know, having a terrible start, like, you know, like your Norwiches and everything did that like last season. And then all of a sudden your backs are up against the wall. 
So, like I said, not 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 resting on any laurels. It's, it's nice because it means that we can go up to places like Newcastle, which is a very long way away. As you know, we all love going up to Newcastle. Sold out 3,000 tickets. Again, the Brentford fans We're here for the whole weekend. We just love going up there. Very friendly, very good vibes, you know, kind of like Brentford in the fact that you can go to any bar with your with your colours on and it's not a problem pretty much, you know. So, yeah, so we're, we're, we're looking forward to that. But I can go there not thinking, oh, my God, we've got to go to Newcastle and get 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 a point and get three points it's like i can go and get newcastle and have, and have a laugh and if we win brilliant and if we don't win we're still going up there and having a laugh you know and it's nice to be in that position because i'd hate to be in you know maybe not in a forest position or you know well, not in a forest position actually just to be <laughs> honest, I'll, be, I'll be sitting there trying to count trying to work out which players on the pitch in this particular game because i'm like getting out 25 sheets of paper trying to, trying to know <laughs> they'll but, definitely um, have the biggest page in the sticker book won't they that's right, hundred percent. So yeah, so hundred percent. I'm really, you know, like I said to you, it's been a really, really good start of the season, and I have to come back because talking about starts to the season. Last season, you asked me the start of the season, and I mentioned Arsenal, of course, and I have to being a Brentford fan the first time that we've beaten any team like that, and it was amazing. Yeah. But this year, Man United. I mean, I'm not being. That's going to go just... down. That's going to go down in like Brentford oh. folklore, isn't it? Mate, you know the Chelsea victory when we beat them last. We we, we went away, and I went with my daughter, and we beat them. And then when we came away, he goes, ah, it's a bit rubbish, isn't it? You know, because Chelsea, right, it's quite a rubbish away day, right? I mean, I don't know yeah. if it's like for you, but for us, it's just it's just rubbish, right? It's, mm-hmm. you know, you can't get to any bars locally. You know, it's just, you know, the view. It's just, it's, I don't know, there's just something really weird. And we've been there, like, it's about the third or fourth time we've been there recently. Played them a couple of times in the cup, and then we played them in the league. And we beat them, and it's really good to beat them. But it wasn't the same as as other games when you've even drawn like the three all against Liverpool and all games like that. It's just kind of really weird. So I'll park that to one side, that Chelsea 4-1, which should have been the crown in glory, that Man United game, because Man United have never, you know, they came last season, but I've never seen Man United on our own turf. I always wanted Man United to, to draw them in the cup at Griffin Park for them to turn up and turn up in the dressing room, which is like, you know, about yeah. the size of, you know, a toilet, Shoe you know box. what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and, and, and go onto the stadium, which is completely tightly packed and with all the sort of fans going absolutely rabid, like, you know, at the, I'd have loved that at Griffin Park. We never got that. But we got this, you know, this time where they beat us last time, um, last season. And, you know, it was Drew that dodgy run that we had. But again, we didn't take our chances. They did. And so they, they beat us. You know, I can't remember the score, two or three. or well, It doesn't mm. matter that time because it doesn't matter because we, we turned it on his head this time and we <laughs> came out of the traps and we absolutely tore them to pieces. Yeah. And it was just, and the thing is that the whole world was watching, you know, because it's Man United <laughs> and it was on TV and everyone went, well, and I even got, I, I got messages not, um, from me. It was Ten Hag's first game, wasn't it? I think. I think it might have been his yeah, first yeah. game or one of his yeah. first few games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I even got some messages from some um, from from people within the England camp, sort of coaches within the England camp, who messaged me and I said, "God, your team's on fire, Bill." And they've known me from when I supported them in the, the third division. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So they've gone, "Your team is on cool. fire, mate." And it's like you know one of those things because you're always telling people like we've got some good players and it's going to come and this that and the other. And everyone sort of goes, "Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, we've heard it all before." But when they saw that, I think they saw for the first time what the glimpses of what we've been seeing here and there and the times when you play games when, you know, striker in front of the goal and he puts the ball over the crossbar and all these things that you do, but it's been a brilliant move, you know, but finally it's like everything just, everything clicked that day yeah. and it was just a brilliant day out and uh, Man United fans weren't, weren't particularly happy, but, you know, it's just one of those <laughs> so, things, isn't so it? So <laughs> what? So what? I mean, that's no offence to any Man United fans that we know, I'm just saying. Absolutely like, you know, not who, at all. Who cares? Like, that was... That was like you say something that's gonna live with you forever. And this, this, this is, I guess, even when you got to the Premier League, you weren't expecting something like that to really happen, yeah. especially against. I know Man United are going through their turmoil, but at the end of the day, it's it's still Manchester United. So any result yeah. over them is class. Um, that's right. you know, moving forward, I mean, you've said about you've already sort of answered my question that I had about your, your sort of goals for this season. Anything above? You know, staying in the league as a bonus. I'm, I'm assuming you finished 13th last season. I'm guessing you're of the the mindset that you're not trying to aim above that. I mean, aim shoot for the stars, but I guess the main important thing is to comfortably stay in the league. The the reality is staying in the league. You know, and 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 it ta- this takes the sort of joy out of football a little bit because you you know when you start saying oh yes, then we get another 150 million, which means that we can, and all yeah. that kind of stuff, which is the thing that I hated when I was in the championship because you're thinking to be honest with you, you just want to go out there and have your team and somebody has another team and it's fairly equal and then you win some games, they win some games, it all becomes exciting. But this kind of sort of like 
money driven kind of football thing is a bit it's it's, it's not very nice but then it, but we're in it so let me talk about it if we yeah. stay in the league we get another 150 mil which we, we the way that we, we we do our stats and we buy our players which means that we'll spend it probably quite well we'll spend a portion of that which means that we'll be able to survive we'll be able to get better players and then we'll move on and and we, what we do is that instead of you know we're trying to not blow our money all immediately, like I said, like other teams have done, like, you know, your mm -hmm. Forest, your, your Villas, your Fulhams when they did that. But we're trying to sort of spend sensibly over a period of time. So, you know, when we came in the league, Ivan Tony, oh, five million pounds. We're like, oh, God, blimey, it's that's a lot of money, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. and that was like, <laughs> and then we got the, we got into the Premier League with, with Spacey spending five million pounds. All of a sudden, then you start spending, oh, 11 million on Christopher Ayer. And we went, oh, my God, we spent 11 million pounds on a player, like I was saying. And then, the, you know, then we bought a few other players, eight and seven and not whatever like that. But it was that, that was it. And then the following season, we spent like 16 million pounds on Hickey. And it was like, oh, my God, we've spent 16 million. <laughs> and th that for us is just like mind blowing. Like, you know, we just we just don't Brentford just don't do that, you know, mm -hmm. but they're just chiseling away in, in, in the way that they're spending the money each year. Uh, the, the rumor was, and I, I don't know if it's true because it's just too unBrentford, and I'll have to, you know, I'll have to sit down and take a breath if it was the case that we had. We got this player called Mudrik from a, from a Ukrainian who we were really after. We tried to get him last year. I think we put in fifteen million for him. Um, they wanted to, they wanted twenty million. We tried to hold out, and then um, then the window closed, and we thought we'll go for him next window. Then the war came, and then it all mm -hmm. kind of everyone just turned on its head and everything like that. Um, but the team Shakhtar the next that he's with. He, um, they, they, they came back probably a little bit stronger. He became a better player. And before you knew it, 20 million was the asking price, then 25. Yeah. And then before we heard it, somebody says that we'd bid 30 million for him. Now, if we bid 30 million for him, I'm just like, that's just, that's not the Brentford that I know. I mean, I'll get a little bit scared, like, you know what I'm saying? But that's kind of where we're at, um, at the moment now. So coming back to your question, you know, about where we will stay, we are, uh, where we will finish. We're a better team than we were last season. That's mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt because we've got we bought better players to come in in and around the players that we had before. We've got a year's more experience in the Premier League, so the mistakes that we might have made last season, we're not going to make them. You know, the goalkeeper we had, you know, <laughs> the goalkeeper that we pulled in, you know, on a free transfer as a substitute goalkeeper who ended up playing for five months. We've ended up signing a goalkeeper from I don't know is it, is it Sampdoria or somewhere like that. We signed, we signed him from Europe somewhere who's like a, mm -hmm. a proper goalkeeper as our second goalkeeper now. Mm -hmm. So all the little mistakes that we were making before, we're not making them. So as a result of that, I'm like I'm still watching the bottom of the table, and I still do that. Yeah. So every week we have a little bit of relegation. If you listen to our podcast, which is up live now, live now, Pride of West. Dot London, if you go to it, it's the Besotted podcast as well. We talked about that. And we talk about the relegation zone and we talk about Forest and we talk about Southampton and we talk about all the teams down the bottom there and hopefully we don't want to get there because you always got an eye down at the bottom yeah. if you're a Brentford fan. But I actually made a prediction in the in the Observer newspaper because I did the predictions in that at the beginning of the season that we will finish one place higher than we did last season, which is 12th. And you know, as I know, it sounds flash that, but... It, once you're not in the sort of bottom four or five, mm -hmm. anywhere between sort of kind of 16th and sort of 10th is kind of like almost the same in the Premier it's, League. Yeah, from what I, I, I know like. exactly what you mean. I mean, I guess I guess with 10th, you can at least say top half finish, but it feels sort of the same. Um, but yeah, especially yeah. 11th to 16th, it's just we stayed in the league. That's all it is. We stayed in the yeah. league. So, um, yeah. which, which again, like you say, it's a bit naff that we talk about because it's even a thing that gets said by commentators now to try and make the last couple of weeks of the season uh relevant when your cities have won the league and two or two out of three people are going down and they've already been relegated to try to say look we, we, you're fighting for money do we yeah. want that probably not but it is the way it is and then, uh, you know even me chastising that a little bit i see the irony when i'm a newcastle supporter who's now clubs owned by you know some of the richest people on planet earth so yeah it's a, it's a strange one but in terms of your manager going on a sort of different direction, Thomas Frank, is he still is he still a man? I mean, I'm not saying that there's nothing came out to make me think that he's not. But as a as a fan who watched them week in week out, um, he was obviously given rightful massive praise for for getting you guys up, for solidifying you in the league for a season. Um, through what you watch now and the way he's you're, you're going about your business, are you still you know very much behind Thomas Frank? Oh, very much. I mean, he's got to the stage now where, you know, people used to laugh at Thomas Frank and used to laugh at us and laugh at us for keeping Thomas Frank because he'd only won one game in his first 10 and he lost, lost, lost eight, I think. Lost eight, drew one, 
and and won one out of his first 10 matches. And and I remember all the media were going, you've got to sack him, he's rubbish. Like, you know, and the, and the club were like, no, he's not. He's doing the right things. We just haven't won. That's fine. So now it's turned on its head and we've got people going, oh, Thomas Frank, you know, Leicester want to sign Thomas Frank. This team want to sign Tom. Everyone wants to sign Thomas Frank, you know, um, because he's brilliant. And, you know, and I'm lucky enough to have met him. You know, he's lucky enough to meet the fans because that's the way that our club is. It's, you know, it's a small you know, it's still a small club, so they're very closely connected to us. So you know, I said to you, he did a podcast down the pub mm-hmm. with us, came down the pub and did a did, did a podcast with us and just had some beers and we had a right laugh of him. And he told us everything and he told us stuff that we shouldn't have told us. You know, I'm like sitting there thinking, no, nah, you're telling us about this planet's going to leave. Should you be telling us that? And he's just like, hold <laughs> straight. But that's just the way that he is. And he's a it's real brilliant. football person. He's a really nice person. And you can see that he, he loves his footy. And if you're a footy person... And you get into the footy zone. You just like talking to people who love football. And he really, really does. And he is on a learning curve. He learned um, two, two, two years being the assistant to Dean Smith. Um, Brentford very cleverly brought him in, knowing that he's going to be manager. But they brought him in under Dean Smith, even though he's probably more experienced than Dean Smith, you know, being manager of Bromby, being manager of the Danish under-19 side. You know, and I think they had to sort of convince him, saying, listen, just be the, you know, be Dean Smith's, you know, number two for him. You know, just do that. They didn't say to him you're going to get a job, but they did that. And he learnt. He learnt about English humour. He learnt about, you know, our jokes. He learnt about how we like going down the pub. He learnt about, you know, English football. He learnt, you know, all these things, being on the bench without having the pressure, you know, with Dean Smith being the main man, yeah. but putting his input in. And so when Dean Smith left, he just slotted straight in become the manager a lot of people are going why have you got him why have you got warnock or why have you got you know your old conveyor belt manager in and brentford like that's that's not what we do so he's come in and he's done a really good job you know he's learned a lot he's made some mistakes he's wound some people up because he's very danish so he's very frank about what he says you know, and, you know <laughs> no frank, pun intended you know, no pun intended <laughs> at all you know but i thought i'd throw that in and give you one for free <laughs> you know so um but yeah so but he is very frank and he'll just say something so he used to wind up the swansea manager because he'll you know he'll turn around or, or, or he'll tell teams you know we were better than you on the day he'll just say you know and mm-hmm. but what he'll do is that he's saying it from statistics so he'll look at the stats and he'll just you know use xg and all the other you know metrics that they'll use and, you know, listen, and I've said this before on here, you know, we would create, you know, we would create tens of dozens of really good high opportunity chances. Because like I said, you, we, we, we look at the stats a lot mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. side as well, because we've, we've, we've grown with this for years with Brentford. They've taught us how to do it. So we sit down there and we look at it and we create these brilliant chances. But because we haven't got Haaland in, in front of goal, you know, we'd ended up putting the ball over the crossbar from six yards, you know what I'm saying? Or kind of knocking it to the goalkeeper, you know, from two yards when it's actually put the ball in the back of the net. So that's the reason why we aren't necessarily where we are. But that's because we are, we haven't got, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million pound players, you know. Yeah. We've got players who have come from other places who are developing. So, you know, you know, we, we understand that that's kind of the position you know, you know that we're in. But just coming back to coming back to the point, I've been going around on a circle there. Yeah, crack on. Um, yeah, no, no. But, but just co- just coming back to the point. You know, Brentford, as it is, they're they're. We, we know. I mean, I'm just saying. We know. I know. I know where they are and where they where they should be going to or where they could be going to. But we yeah. kind of still keep it very much in check um, because, like I said to you, and I'm, I'm just saying, this, things could always go horribly wrong. You know, and nothing is a given. And especially when you're sad like us, we haven't got the money, even as as you guys, of going out and Mm -hmm. buying all these players to try and correct things. So I'm happy where we are this season. I am I know where we can go, but the position where where I think we're going to finish in at, you know, like I said to you, 12th, um, listen, that's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to always have a sense of realism. Um, I've always had that with Newcastle. Some have misplaced of a pessimism, but you know, you have to just be, you know, you have to be real. Just because um, when we got took over, I didn't think we were going to suddenly survive, and what happened was beyond my wildest dreams. Um, and again, we are where we're trying to go, but you can't expect it to happen overnight. And like you just said, Brentford, you know where they ought to be aiming for, and you know they've got the tools to do it: the infrastructure, the manager, the players, and it's just about slowly building, like you said. Um, you just mentioned there about putting the ball in the back of the net, uh, getting the chances, having the the you know the players to do so. So we're going to talk about Ivan Tony. We talked about him last time, um, but the reason I want to talk about Ivan Tony specifically is, like I said at the start of the podcast, 
you are a, a massive Brentford fan, but you're also a massive England fan. You've travelled all over watching England, um, and I'm sure you never really expected in the near future for those worlds to collide in, in a way in terms of Ivan Tony, one of your centre-forwards, getting called up to the England squad. Now, you know, personally, from, from outside looking in, I think he deserves it. He's a, he's a very good player. He's evolving. He's, he's, he's grown into a, certainly into a good player from when he was at Newcastle, more through his time at Peterborough. Um what was your thoughts? Did you think he deserved the call up, and and how disappointed were you that he didn't get that chance in those two Nations League games? A hundred percent deserved the call up. Uh, he's a very very good player. Um, looking back on it, I'm a bit gutted that he didn't get called up before. I uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the podcast, but I went to San Marino. I mean, I've like I said, I go you know all over the place with England. Uh, mm. I never did think that I would ever see a. Brentford player playing for England, particularly at the World Cup, because I mean, listen, it's not done. It's not a done deal yet, and he's not like yeah. he's not not on the plane as yet. So we'll see. You know, but it was a very Especially proud moment to be in that yeah. to be in that squad, like the last one. I know he didn't play, but it does mean that he's in Southgate's thoughts going forward. Yeah, that's right. But um, it was a it was a really really proud moment for me. I was meant to go to Italy, but I couldn't because I've I've just started up a grassroots football club called Barnet mm-hmm. Panthers, actually, who actually ironically play Hanwell Town, actually, as well, oh, which well. is, I know, one of yeah, your sister the, clubs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. The so they, they've got, they've, That's right, they've got a little junior section. So I set up this girls' football team Brilliant. called Barnet Panthers. And, uh, and Panthers. so it's 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 kind of got me, um, uh, it, it's tied up with Saturdays. Yeah, luckily there's no games this weekend. Luckily, it's funny that, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so I wasn't able to go to Italy for the England game. And I was a bit gutted because I thought, I'm going to miss Ivan Tony's debut. But then I just obviously went to the, the game at Wembley um, for the, the game on the Monday, which I thought he's going to make his debut. And I was gutted that he didn't make it. And part of the reason why, I think, is because because England lost to Italy. I think probably he wasn't in the plans to play against Italy, but he was in the plans to play against Germany. I think they probably thought we get a result against Italy, we bring him on against Germany, and then we can go off with a bit of a flourish. All of a sudden, we lose against Italy. Pressure's on Southgate. We go 2-0 down against Germany. More pressure on Southgate. Need to get result. We start to come back, start to score some goals. He's like, I can't bring Tony on yet because I need to get a result out of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of, he was a victim of all the results and the goals going in, which is a bit of a shame. But just coming back to what I was saying about some Newcastle fans, I was in Newcastle last, uh, I went to, no, not Newcastle, I went to San Marino when England played San Marino that beat them. And I don't even know what the score was. And this is really bad. Was that, was I, was that the 10? Was that the 10 maybe? Was it 10? That's what I'm saying. I've got no idea. After a while. It, <laughs> you thought it was 1-0. You were just were drunk. In. It looked like a 10. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't. The thing is, I wasn't even drunk, but it was just, it was so many goals. I mean, literally every time you looked, it was a bang, another goal. Oh, bang, yeah, another yeah, goal. Yeah. Got him, bang, another goal. Got him. But before the game, we were in this bar. I can't remember this pirate bar or something like that. And there's loads of these Newcastle fans in there and I was chatting to them like you know and they, and they were saying to me like Ivan Tony you know he, he should be playing today and, and I and this was like I think it was in October I think it was about a year ago today now mm. um or it's in November and at that time we just got um Raya was just injured we had a couple of dodgy results and all I could think of is I thinking mate all I want is for us to stay in the Premier League so I was thinking the last thing I want is a, a you know a, Ivan Tony's eye to be on England or for him to play for England and then someone to sign him in January and then he's gone and then we're all sorts of trouble. So I was like, mm-hmm. no, nah, mate, no, nah, no, nah. he, he shouldn't be playing for England. He should be concentrating on, um, you know, on, on, on Brentford. And we were almost like having an argument. They say, no, 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 you know, you know, if Calvert Lewin's playing for them, why can't he play for them? Blah, blah, blah. And he's just talk- he's going for all the different options. I was like, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Then he stopped and then, and then he goes, listen, I'm not being funny, but today we're playing San Marino. You know, Ivan Tony can't do it against San Marino. He might as well give up. <laughs> and it made me stop and think. And I thought, actually, you've, you've got a bit of a point here, actually. And yeah. I thought that would have been almost like the prime opportunity to bring someone like that into the team, slightly less pressure, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of opposition. You know, he's used to kind of, you know, bully, you know bullying players and yeah, jockeying them and all that kind of stuff. And then he scores, you know, a couple of goals. And they think, oh, he's got a couple of goals on. We're quite comfortable bringing him in the next match or taking him off the bench. So I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. with uh, Southgate because he went really safe there he kind of went oh Harry Kane you know but we all, yeah, pretty we all much a full what, team yeah you know we, we know what he can do you know so um so Ivan you know really proud of what he's done and he's he's he's, he's come on obviously leaps and bounds since he's started with us his all-round game is magnificent he does everything he defends he you know he probably does too much to be quite honest with you you know he's out in the wing he's tracking back he's going deep you know there's all sorts of stuff going on with him but he's great and um and we will really miss him if he doesn't play if he doesn't play for us because he sometimes takes the place of two or three players and mm-hmm. 
he, he really is that good. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he will do in a side if you've got, you know, maybe start, and this is not a disrespect on our Brentford players, but you've got some slightly higher quality or caliber players in certain mm -hmm. positions, which means that he doesn't necessarily do or cover those jobs because they say to you, don't worry, Ivan, we got this covered, mate. Stand you just go up there. You just you, you stay up there and you maybe track back a bit, you know, pay the ball through and, uh, and and put the ball in the back of the net. And it'll be really interesting to see what happens if that's if that becomes his role. But maybe that's not him. Maybe he's like, that's not me. My DNA, the way that I play is this is how I play. And that makes me really different. And I, yeah. me, me all over the place draws people out of position to allow other people, giving them opportunities to score. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's certainly a good player. He's certainly got a lot more in the tank in terms of his development. I mean, who knows? He, he might end up being maybe a top side, taking a gamble on him. Maybe for your sake, he won't. Um, but let's move on to the game. Let's move on to Saturday. You know, they're all big games. The last time he came to St. James's Park, it was 3-3. It was Eddie Howe's first game. But, you know, he, he didn't actually, he wasn't actually on the, in the dugout because he had COVID. Uh, Jason Tyndall took care of the team that day. It was a game full of goals. Like I say, it was 3-3. Coming up to St James's Park, Billy, uh, what what are you what are your worries? You know what you what you sort of you know you've got trepidation about, and what's what's what do you think your strengths are, and how are you going to be able to hurt Newcastle uh, in on Saturday's game? I mean Saturday, I'm just <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> just I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just honestly I'm just <laughs> brilliant. I've got a brilliant time Friday. Sunday, Wyland Brewery, where it is the fourth, that's, all these other places. That's that's really what I'm looking forward to going up to. And, you know, and then the game is, you know, I keep talking about this, you know, kick football out of football. Of course we want to win. But, you know, when we kind of, when we be going 40 years where, you know, the football becomes secondary for your, for your yeah, weekend yeah, away yeah. or your day away, we're, okay. we're, we're still very much centred around that kind of vibe, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, coming back to the game itself, we know that you've got some great players. You've got some. You've signed some good players. There's going to be some. You know, you're going to cause us some problems. Say, so Maximum last year, last year, you know, he 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 made us open our eyes. Like, we're like that. Whereas Joe Linton probably didn't have his best game when we went up to you last year, but he's come on leaps and bounds since then. Great game knows, at, at your yeah. place, didn't he? he That's right, he did. Game, he yeah. did. You know, Tri Trippier. I don't. I'm not, I think he might not have actually played against us last time at your place. Mm -hmm. You know, just no, things like that. So there's 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 there's, there's little dangers in there that we, we know about. We haven't got Norgard in our side, which is a big miss for us. It's a big, big miss for us because we lose a bit of creativity in there. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got, um, you know, Janelt in there who costs us about 27p and he's like, he, he's brilliant. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's worth every penny of the 27p that we paid for him <laughs> plus more. <laughs> you know? But he's a great little player. He's like a little Duracell bunny, you know, motor mouse character that, that just mm -hmm. basically just does a job. And he's very different to Norgard, but also he's one of those players who, when he's on it, he is properly on it and he just gets his bit between the teeth, you know, but he can't do that every single week. So we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes. But I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to a, another game. You know, we like to play attacking football, you know, whether or not we'll sit back a bit and try and hit you on the break. You try and be hitting us on the break. Now, if it's a bit of a ding dong match, like it was last year, it'd be brilliant. You know, six goals. I mean, I'll, I'll have some of that. And I'm in the, the sort of podcast, pride of West dot London. I've put us down for a three all draw again, a bit of a I've, mad yeah. one. Wow. Well, it might've been a two all draw. Maybe the Allard went for a three all draw, but we both went for a bit of a ding donger, you know, um, a bit of a good time. Let's have a bit of a laugh. Then everyone comes out, goes back to the pub afterwards and everyone's happy. So, uh, that's what I'm going to go for anyway. Brilliant. I mean, well, to be honest, I think as a Newcastle support, I'm desperate for another win. Uh, just being a little bit greedy, I guess. Um, I mean, we've, we've had the likes of Bournemouth. Um, I'd say Brentford are a rung above in terms of Premier League um, right at the moment. Uh, they're a better side than Bournemouth. But we've had the Bournemouth, we've had Palace there. And we failed to really break them down on both occasions. So, I mean, Fulham was a nice little weight off our back because, um, you know, they went down to 10 men. But even before then, then 10 minutes, we played really well. Uh, we looked very dangerous. We hit the post, and then we just put them at the sword when they went down to ten men and, and put four. It should have been six or seven past them. So hopefully we're full of confidence and we we get chances. But I'm very wary of, of Brentford and the, and the threat that they pose. Um, do you see any areas of the pitch where the game will be won and lost? I know, like you've just said, you're just here for the the, the spectacle and the weekend. But do you feel like it's going to be who takes the chances? Do you feel like it might be a midfield battle, or you know, could it be how well each one defends? I know it's all sort of all contributes to a result football well no no it's mid midfield is obviously really important especially with sides like us you know if whoever's going to dominate the midfield 
You know, um, you know the, the, the passing game, you know, he's going to be able to break them down. We've got Jensen in our midfield. We've got Jensen, who's sometimes good Jensen or bad Jensen. If you get bad Jensen, it's, it's not a great day for us. If it's good Jensen, then it's a good day for us. You know, if um, if Yanel, who's he's been all right recently, is he hasn't necessarily been on the the levels that he has been before. But if he decides to take himself to the levels where he is before, where literally he's throwing himself at people and just closing down and just all over the place, it could be absolutely fantastic. But also the other thing is that we have to make sure... I don't know if um, Ethan Pinnock's going to be coming back and playing. I mean, I would have said that, seeing as he hasn't played a game as yet, to throw him straight in against you might be a little yeah, bit of a not. question mark. But mm -hmm. Pontus Janssen is out because I think he got injured last week against Bournemouth. Yeah. So, you know, is Zanke going to go in? We're not sure. So, again, there's that scenario. We just want to make sure that we don't make the silly mistakes that we've done at the back, which we have done at time. We also have a tendency this season, if you look at us, we go 2-0 down and then we start to come back. So we went 2-0 down against Leicester, then we came back 2-all. We went 2-0 down against Fulham and then came back to 2-all and then we, then they scored a goal late on when, when we were going for it, actually. It was a bit against the run of play and Fulham fans will actually say that as well. We went 1-0 down against Everton, came back against them. We went 1-0 down against someone else as well, I can't remember, but we, or 2 down against someone So we've been going down a lot, but we've had the, the, the spirit to come back, so but um, obviously we didn't go to, to, to go two down down against Man United because we just <laughs> four goals against them. <laughs> you know, yeah. that was a good one. You know, so we'll never forget um, so, that. That's right. I just thought I'd just throw that one in there again. <laughs> but what I'm going to say is that so we just need to make sure that we don't do that because we have come back from the two nil down. But there's going to be times when we're going to come back. We're going to we're going to go two down two down, and we ain't going to come back from that. Mm -hmm. um, and certain teams you don't want to go. One one nil or two nil down against, and I think Newcastle is one of them. Well, I mean, hopefully, um, I'm not saying you're the prophet of doom for your own club, but but I hope those last comments are correct. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but I hope I hope that's the case. But um, either way, uh, you've said about you know wrap this up. You've said about how much you're looking forward to coming this week, and and before I wrap this video up, I need to appeal to everyone who's going to watch this video this after this evening. At the time of recording, it's Thursday. It should be up tonight. Tonight, Friday daytime, Billy is after um, recommendations for bars in Newcastle. I've given, <laughs> I've given him a couple. He's mentioned some great ones. He's mentioned Fort. He's mentioned Wild and Brewery. There's, we, we, we're known for our good bars. Please comment down below with your suggestions where Billy should go, whether that's before the match, after the match, Friday night, Saturday night. Where do you go? Where, where would you like to see Billy pop up and, and be welcomed with open arms, whether it's a win, <laughs> lose, or draw? Let us know. That's right. No, but, uh, thank Billy, you. I'll be actually... very much appreciated. Like I said, the Friday night is is the one where we just we're doing the pre and we just you know we're just taking a nice little night out on the town. So any recommendations will be very good, and we can pass that on to the besotted crew who will be dotted around town over the weekend as well. And I'm sure that you'll see them, and um, we're going to enjoy ourselves. Like I said, win, lose, or draw. Love it, love it, Billy. As always, your uh, you know your, your, your attitude is infectious. Your love of the game is infectious, and if anything, anyone can take anything from this podcast this podcast is to just you know like you say kick football out of football love it for what it is and just you know have a good time so thank you very much for coming on it won't be the and last i'm going to say just one one Go quick point as well and just remember this as well because i'm obviously going out to qatar for the world cup as well with uh with with, with the sea england play and uh i just thought about it and i thought tell you what i mean even though we do our besotted podcast which is pride of west london check it out I might do a little uh, Besotted in Qatar podcast. So we might just do like a just drop yeah, a little podcast dope. literally every single day from Qatar because it's going to be such a different and, and strange World Cup. And I thought it'd be really, really, really stupid not to document this yeah, because it's 100%. going to be just so. So definitely check that out. Just bookmark it, you know, Pride of West London or besotted.com or just follow us on Twitter, Besotted. And like I said, you Besotted from Qatar. I mean, I know we're a Brentford podcast, but this will be no, kind of an England, England yeah. and maybe a World Cup podcast because obviously there's going to be sort of three billion people all in like one square town <laughs> <laughs> in Qatar. So that's going to be just quite amazing. So check that out for sure. But obviously check out Besotted after the match as well because we do a post-match podcast with Brentford and Newcastle fans' views straight after the game. It'll be up probably about 7 o'clock by 7 o'clock on Saturday night. Love that, Billy. Love it. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, if we don't speak before, then safe travels uh, to Qatar. And coming up this weekend, we hope you have a great time, apart from what happens on the pitch, of course. Um, but thank you very much for coming on. This won't be the last time. We'll speak again very soon. To those of you watching, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like the video, share the video, do what you do. But also comment down below with your thoughts on this week's game and obviously for those recommendations for Billy. And if you haven't already, what you're doing, please subscribe to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel.
And I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Cheers.